Brenda was 150 pounds overweight and desperately wanted to get the weight off. But even though she followed every diet perfectly, nothing was working. As I helped Brenda shed the weight through keto, we learned that the secret for her wasn't the stress eating, it was the stress itself. Brenda lived her life by the book. She was a type A firstborn female. Her father was a major in the military and he expected nothing less than the strong-willed rule follower she had become. Being part of a military family, she had moved eight times before she was 10 years old. Despite Brenda's disciplined, structured life, she struggled with her weight since puberty. She ate smaller and smaller meals to keep that weight manageable, but three times her weight exploded with a 50 pound weight gain. The first time was after a car accident where Brenda's friend died and Brenda lived. She recalled hardly eating anything with all the depression and grief, but six months after that funeral, she was 50 pounds heavier. The second time was when Brenda moved to a different country with her husband. She barely ate anything and didn't like the food in this new country, but she gained another 50 pounds within six months of moving. Brenda added the next 50 pounds after yet another move. Brenda tried every diet. She counted calories. She went vegan, did paleo. She followed Weight Watchers for a year, didn't miss a meeting and had perfect points, yet had zero weight loss. Brenda saw several physicians, and when she told them she hardly ate anything, she knew by the way they looked at her that they did not believe her. At 45 years old, approaching 300 pounds, a friend told Brenda to try keto. She did not have much hope that this would work, but with nothing else to lose, she said, okay, I'll give it four months. True to her character, Brenda followed the rules of 20 total carbohydrates every day for three months. And indeed, there was no weight loss at the end of three months. But sticking to her word, she made it to the fourth month. And at the end of the fourth month, she lost the first few pounds. And three years later, was down 150 pounds. So why? Why did keto work when the other diets didn't? When doctors hear patients say that they eat nothing yet gain this weight, they secretly roll their eyes and say, yeah, right. If weight loss truly is calories in versus calories out, their patients are either lying to the doctors or lying to themselves. But those of us who study keto know that the equation is more than just calories. Her cortisol was to blame. Brenda asked me this question, why? After losing 100 pounds. By this time, she'd had some amazing success and she just couldn't believe that this was related to a secret hormone. When I asked her about stress, she said, I don't feel stressed. And she wanted proof that this was the cause. I showed Brenda the power of her cortisol by using a continuous glucose monitor. This device measures glucose 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we watched her glucose levels continuously. After one week, Brenda's graph showed that most of her blood sugars were in the 70 to 95 range while on this strict ketogenic diet. She ate one meal per day and her blood sugars stayed very stable even after that one meal. But there were spikes in her blood sugars and they weren't after her meals. Brenda looked at the time on the graphs and realized that these spikes were happening just after she started watching the daily news. Brenda looked at one of the other glucose spikes and realized it wasn't after food either. That spike rose after she got an awful phone call regarding her mom's health and that one lasted six hours. So if it wasn't food, what was causing the glucose spikes? The answer is cortisol. Yeah, cortisol is our stress hormone and it stimulates messages that are important during high stress situations. One of those messages dumps more glucose into the blood without eating. Yes, that glucose mainly rushes out of our liver and floods into our circulation, raising the blood glucose. At the same time that that blood glucose rises, cortisol also prevents the muscles from taking up that blood glucose and using it. They want to save that fuel for vital organs like your brain, your heart, and your lungs. And that all makes good sense in a time of a high stress situation. This all seems to work out unless you're chronically in a high state of cortisol. Yeah, cortisol pushes the glucose to rise and 
In an insulin resistant patient, which is very commonly associated with high cortisol, the rise in glucose causes the insulin to stay high. So in total, stress increases the insulin. That is a disaster if you're trying to lose weight. The problem is that after weeks of abnormally elevated cortisol, the body adapts and the abnormal becomes the new normal and then starts the cycle of nearly impossible weight loss. High insulin and cortisol are both to blame. And until they're both lowered, losing weight is extremely difficult. Brenda was not lying to her doctor or herself when she said that she hardly ate any food. The calories were small, but each one triggered a tsunami of fat storage because of the revved up cortisol and insulin. Lowering the cortisol means lowering her stress. That is hard. Brenda's stress originates from her childhood. Although she came from a loving home, the rigidity of rules combined with those multiple moves offered plenty of opportunities to create a high cortisol foundation. During times of added stress, like that car accident or moving away from her support system, Brenda's body piled on the cortisol and the weight followed. Lowering her insulin is relatively easier when compared to addressing some of that childhood trauma. Brenda can lower her insulin by stopping the carbohydrates and eating mostly fat. But when she did that, it still took Brenda four months to lose any weight because of that high cortisol. Keto dropped her insulin and changed the fuel energizing her body. Brenda's high cortisol normalized somewhat with keto, and as the weight came off, her cortisol lowered a little bit further. This positive cycle continued a few pounds at a time. Working with a counselor and finding other ways to lower her stress will be a critical factor in Brenda's long-term success at keeping off that 150 pounds. What else affects cortisol? Check out this video to find out.